Warning, this video contains team selection and captain choices which some viewers may find offensive. Hey guys and welcome back to FPL TV. Before starting today, a very quick mention of OneFootball who have very kindly sponsored this video. The world's best footballing news app has now been made even better, relaunching with a fresh new design. Gain access to news, scores and stats from leagues all over the world with a brand new interface that's cleaner, simpler and smarter than ever. As for FPL, you can follow each team in the Premier League and then get live updates from all the goals and assists every game week. Download it for free using the link in the description box below. With just four days to go until the all-important Game Week 1 deadline, let's take a look at a few changes I've made to my initial first draft team. The first change was to swap budget goalkeeper Matt Ryan of Brighton for Southampton's McCarthy at the same price of 4.5 million. At the back end of last season, in the nine games of Project Restart, Southampton only conceded eight goals, whereas Brighton conceded 14. In those nine games, the Saints also conceded just 64 shots inside the box, whilst the Seagulls conceded 100, the second most behind only Norwich. I do think Ryan will still do well for bonus points, but ultimately Southampton's defensive stats do look far superior, and on paper they also have a much better run of opening fixtures. Aaron Ramsdale at Sheffield United is still a strong consideration of mine, but as mentioned in my last video, I'm finding it hard to free up the extra 0.5 million to afford him. In defence, Crystal Palace's budget enabler Nathan Ferguson looked to be one of the very few £4 million defenders who would actually start in game week one. However, since recording my last video, he's now become an injury doubt, so in comes his teammate Tyrick Mitchell, who's also 4 million and looks set to start at home to Southampton this weekend. A few weeks ago, both Ruben Vanagre and James Justin looked to be budget-friendly ways into Wolves and Leicester's defence respectively. However, since then, both teams have now strengthened in defence, therefore giving us less certainty on each of their starting places. To begin the season, I think Justin's place is still okay, but as for Vanagre, he's rumoured to be potentially on his way out of the club, and due to this, I've now replaced him with Stuart Dallas of Leeds. Leeds boasted a very good defensive record in the Championship last season, and I expect them to be a surprise package this year under manager Marco Bielsa. Stuart Dallas also produced an impressive 5 goals and 3 assists last season, so some good attacking numbers there to go along with his decent clean sheet potential. Granted, he did spend a bit of time playing in midfield last year, and that will perhaps make his attacking stats look better than what he'll offer us this season. But even so, it shows that he's an important, versatile player with an eye for goal who can play further forward if needed. In midfield, I was pretty set on owning Mason Greenwood for game week one and simply benching him for the opening blank game week. However, because of the controversy surrounding him during international duty, and now having to self-isolate for two weeks, there's question marks on whether now he'll even be available for game week two. This one's a bit of a wait and see, and I still expect him to be exceptional value this season. But considering he blanks in game week one anyway, it does give me an excuse to opt for someone that does play for now. In this current draft setup, I've got 8 million to spend here, and players like Matias Pereira, Diogo Jota and Harvey Barnes are all within my considerations. As things stand, at the exact price of 8 million, Chelsea's Hakim Ziyech fills that spot nicely. His place in my team is fitness dependent though, with him picking up a small knee injury in a recent friendly and therefore perhaps not being available. In strictly footballing terms, I'm a huge fan of the Moroccan and rate him very highly, but as an FPL asset, the jury's still out for me. My concern with him is that despite his talent, he's more of an assister than he is a goal scorer, and due to this, I much prefer his teammates Havertz or Pulisic, who I think offer more of a goal threat, but are just slightly out of my price range, both of whom are in my thinking as well, if I can find that 0.5 million. In a low profile move, I've also swapped Stevens of Brighton for his midfield counterpart Basuma at 4.5 million. It's unlikely either will feature for me, but Basuma may offer a bit more attacking potential. In the 4.5 million bracket, I'm also considering Oliver Burke, who could be on his way to Chef United. As mentioned in my last video, I'm liking the look of this front three in Mitrovic, Werner and Martial. Although, because Martial doesn't play in game week one, the plan is to take a one week punt on someone else and then keep enough money in the bank to then buy Martial back for game week two. 
So, in comes Danny Ings to face Palace, before then bringing Martial back the following game week. With these changes, let's see how the team now lines up for game week one. Also, if you're enjoying this video, then please support the channel by dropping a like and most importantly, getting subscribed to FPL TV. You can also hit the notification bell so you'll always be updated when a new video on the channel goes live. With Aubameyang putting in an impressive display in the Community Shield, and since then scoring another two goals in a recent preseason friendly, the Gabonese striker heads into game week one in decent form to face Fulham. He scored three goals against the Cottagers in the two games against them two years back, so I think I'm set on captaining him for the opener. With these changes, the opening game week one team does now look considerably stronger, because I'm not being forced to bench the likes of Greenwood and Martial for their blank game week. It will, however, be a shame to be without them from game week two onwards, and that's why I've kept 0.5 million in the bank, with the plan to bring Martial straight in for game week two. As the deadline draws closer, it is worth mentioning that I've been thinking to go without Mo Salah to open this season, and instead distribute those funds around the squad. Hypothetically, by going without the Egyptian King, it would allow me to bring in the likes of Son, Havertz, Doherty, and really build a more balanced squad. Of course, there's always a bit of fear factor going without Salah though, and by owning him at 12 million, it does allow me to move to any other big hitter if needed, like Fernandez, Sterling, De Bruyne, Sadio Mane, without having to tear my squad up in the process. So that's how my team currently lines up, along with a few of my considerations, and it's likely I'll upload a final team selection on Friday, a day before the game week deadline, just in case there's any significant changes to the lineup. If you enjoyed the video, then please be sure to get subscribed. I'll be back very soon with the return of the Game Week 1 point predictor. So until then, FPL responsibly and I'll catch you all very soon.